All right, everyone, this is an amazing day. Oh my goodness, best treat ever because I have Amber McHugh here. I've been counting down for this all week, Amber. <laughs> Me too. I'm so thrilled. This is a great way to spend Friday. I know. Absolutely. And I just had my smoothie bowl, which I always do on Friday morning. So all is oh, good. Oh, you're good. I just went straight for the coffee. Straight for the coffee. <laughs> oh, I had that first. Believe me. Um, so for everyone, I'm sure probably everybody listening is familiar with you and all of your amazingness. Um, but I would love for you to just give a little bit of your backstory your passions, your all the things. And then we're going to talk about one of our favorite topics, which is planning and productivity. So. Oh my gosh. So excited. Well, yes, I'd be happy to share a little intro for anyone that we have not connected yet. I'm so thrilled to be meeting you and connecting with you here. And, you know, it's interesting. My journey, as I think back and think through an intro, I immediately went to the very beginning yeah. for some reason today. And I was thinking about, you know, when I started the business and I had a moment when I was sitting there thinking, is this going to work? Is this going to work? Work. And I was actually, um, at the time I was working a full-time job. I was starting two businesses, didn't quite know it, but we were brewing two businesses at the time. And we, I was in an MBA program and I had a heart for small business. And in my MBA program, we were coaching and it was about executive coaching, really organization development, um, you know, the doctor for corporate, the doctor for business, kind of, as you think about organization development yeah. and consulting is my background. And it's like, you know, I don't know if that's small enough. So I thought I was actually going down the life coaching path, but I kept getting pulled back in and everyone I was talking to, it'd go back to a business conversation. Yeah. Like, oh, my heart is in small business. And at the same time, Megan, we were starting my business partner and I in the photography business. So I run two businesses, AmberMcHugh.com, where I consult with small business owners on growth and scale. And I run a photography business, Three Boudoir. We are in 17, soon to be 27 cities in Are you United kidding States. me? No. Oh, holy cow. I didn't know it had grown that big. That's amazing. Oh it's phenomenal. And it's so much fun. And as I was doing the photography business, uh, we were all about empowering and connecting with women and just highlighting the beauty and the awesome that is women. Because so often we don't see it in ourselves, but we know in a boudoir photo shoot, like, oh, we turn it up. And I realized as I was growing that business, like, I really, I love our mission. And again, it kept going back to business. I love running the business. So we redesign things. And really, I co-run that business with my business partner. Um, we play different roles. And I consult with other small business owners because my passion is how can we create a better life through our businesses? Because so many people start businesses to get uh, freedom to have more flexibility because you see a different way. And if we don't run and operate and plan well in our businesses, things can get a little crazy again. <laughs> things can go a little wild. So that is so much where my heart is and a little bit of backstory in there as well. I love that. And I think what I, you know, what resonated when I first stumbled upon you a couple of years ago was, and where I was instantly like, yes, this is, this is an alignment with me. While I appreciate the message and the inspiration that, you know, the Gary V's of the world put out there was like, I don't, I don't want to hustle. I don't want to work 18. Yeah. I like, I did that in my twenties in a corporate setting in the dot-com world and all of that. And it was cool and interesting, but I'm in a different place in my life. And so the way you talk about, you know, planning and scaling and being super strategic and intentional to enjoy your life while running a business is what just made me go, yes, this is my person. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's such a gift to hear. And I think that there is that place for that motivation, like yes. what's going to get us excited and what's going to give us fuel to take the step. And it has to be ever so 
balance integrate integrately into there's a uh oh that word's not coming out that word's not that's a, it's worse <laughs> give it away it has to be gently balanced with the desire for what we want for our future because it's easy when we're in that space of growth and we're in that space of this is my vision i've got to get there like that hustle will kick in that feeling will kick in and I have to watch it sometimes as well. I'm like, wait a second. I think I've pretty much overcome it. My clients have recognized my peers. My clients are like, Amber, they're like, you're really chill about this. I'm like, I am now. Like, I think I fully overcome that feeling of, oh my gosh, hustle. Because it, it's, it's in us. It's in, especially if we come from corporate, especially if we come from, I grew up, um, it, my grandparents were farmers. Like I grew up, we work, we work hard, but does it always have to come from this place of push and drive? And no, it can come from a place of pulling toward your vision, but it takes a different energy and it takes a different mindset. And we always have to be watching to balance the two. I love that. And when you were talking about that, that hustle and push, like I, while I do, I love the word hustle. I connect with it. Cause I'm like, I'm, I'm a very driven person, but it doesn't mean that you need to be, is it, is my business always on my mind? Do I get ideas randomly at seven o'clock at night or three o'clock in the morning? Sure. And I don't want to turn that off, but what I do want to turn off is that feeling of a need to constantly be working and not be able to go be present with friends, with family, with I'm binging Netflix one night because I just need to turn off or whatever that looks like. You said that so well. You said that constant state, the, uh, the activity that comes from it. The yeah. definition of the word hustle from the dictionary is to be in a constant state of great activity. It's oh. not to be productive. It's not to be actually getting to the destination that you desire to be getting to. We're just in motion like a rocking chair, not actually going anywhere, just kind of hanging out. You may not actually be doing productive work, which is why I think what you talk about is so important. And the antonym to hustle, one of the antonym that jumps out at me, like, um, that's it. The antonym that stands out and I think is so important for us to recognize is peace. Oh, yeah. Like you have to have both. You have to have both. There has to be balance. Yes. Yeah. And I am a fan of balance. It doesn't come perfectly. It doesn't come in every moment. My balance more looks like I'm going to work hard for a season and I'm going to take a season off and we're going to have a good six week run. And then, okay, I got to cool down. <laughs> yeah. And that's why, I mean, you know, I love that's why I always use the word harmony instead of balance yeah. because of that. It, it, it can't always be equal. Every day is not, I'm working for four hours and I'm doing, no, it's, I have a week where I'm all in. I have two weeks where I completely check out, but it's to keep harmony in all the parts of our lives so yeah. that it all still works together. Yeah. And I think that's such a refreshing flip as well, because it doesn't have to be every day that we're looking for all of the boxes to be checked. It can be in a season. It could be this week, this is my focus. And next week, this is my new focus. Yeah. Um, Harmony, so beautiful. Yeah. So let's talk about one of, I think, both of our favorite topics, which is planners. Yes. <laughs> we're both planner junkies. Oh. Um, and for those of you that don't know, Amber has the most amazing planner, and it is a planner that I use, which you, some of you may be going, but hang on, Megan, you, you make and sell your own planner. <laughs> so I want to explain the fundamental differences between the top planner versus your fresh start planner and why I believe together they are like this unstoppable power duo. So I, I talk a lot about, you know, the reason why I think people call planners unsuccessful or that planner quote doesn't work is because they're trying to find a planner that's like an easy button in life. Hey, I wanna do my meal prep and I wanna have it be a CRM for my business and I wanna do my strategic goal setting and my visioning and I also want it to tell me what I'm supposed to be doing every day and keep track of my kid's school assignment. I'm like, no, it's not gonna do any of those well. And so, you know, my planner is very much a tactical, 
this is where you do your weekly planning. This is your command center. What is happening and when very pragmatic tactically. The Fresh Start Planner is what I use for all my strategic big picture visioning. So I would love for you to share the backstory of how the Fresh Start Planner came to be um, and what your vision for it is. Oh, what I just love that overview because the big picture is something that I think as business owners, as people who have goals and a vision for our life, we need to bring it back to the big picture from time to time because it's so easy to get in the weeds. This is where hustle like comes into play. This is where shiny objects creep in. This is where distractions pop up and we get off track from aligning with our goals. And when we sometimes get elevation, right? We reconnect to what's important. And it was, it was 2000 and it was 2012. It might've been 2011. Wow. And I was seeing in communities of business owners say, how do I plan ahead for my year? And because I have a consulting background, I'm like, oh, I can help plan ahead, right? I can see that big picture. I've got strategies for this. I've got things that I've seen work and not work. And I took time. I believe it was the summer of 2012, July, 2012. And I sat down and I went through my planning process. What do we need to reflect on? What do we need to prioritize? How do we start to map out and think through vision for the year ahead? And I documented that and I went through that process, my process, and I came back to it in the fall and I put it together as the Fresh Start Workbook, which we released in our first, as a digital product only in our first ever planathon in the fall of 2020, 2012, all the 20s. Is that 2012? Oh my gosh, okay. Well, for 2013 planning. And it, it, it's so incredible how this has evolved and how this has become a part. So I plan twice a year. I plan in July, still to this day, I sit down every July, I'm like, let's go big picture again. And I do it again at year end. And then in our Fresh Start workbook, there are touch points because we can't get elevation once or twice a year. Amen. Yeah. We're way too disconnected. So we have touch points that align and help you implement, right? And get elevation monthly, right? Are we reconnecting to our goals? Are we grounding? Because when we pause to get elevation, when we pause to reflect, Research shows a couple of different things. We are happier, we're more satisfied as individuals, yep. and we are more productive and successful toward reaching our goals. And so I'm like, all right, there's, I like to have like, I like to have my anecdotal data. I like to see what my clients are having impact on. We know that there's a lot of business practicality. Like we've seen this in motion for years, then show me some data. So bringing all of those things together, we have designed this process, iterated it over the years, evolved it. So it marries with the daily, weekly, right, planning processes so that they go together nicely and you don't lose track of where you're going. And we keep hustle at bay and we keep harmony in flow. Oh, that's so powerful. And especially, you know, years like we're having right now where planning is just a lot harder, right? I mean, we don't know what we don't know. I don't know if, I don't know if there'll be summer camps for my daughter this summer. Am I full-time momming it? Am I like, I don't know. And, you know, I had always had a very, it was messy, just a, a journal kind of notebook where I do my monthly check-ins, my quarterly, all of that. Well, now that I've used the Fresh, that's my second year using the Fresh Start workbook. And I always call it a planner, but it really is a workbook, which is what makes it so powerful. Um, having it more systemized and beautiful looking <laughs> than my, my ratty old binder is, it now more than ever having that ability to reconnect on that rhythm of every single month as part of my monthly planning, it's strategic and tactical and okay. I don't know what I don't know. My plans for 2021 look very different than how I have planned in the past because of all the uncertainty. And so now more than ever is where I feel like this workbook is so beneficial because what so many people I'm seeing them doing is they're just kind of throwing their hands up and going, well, I'll just wing it. 
Yeah. Like you can't, you still, even if you can't plan out the next 12 months of your strategy, don't wing it, but maybe you're only planning 60 days out with an, a hope of where you might go, like something, get something in place. And that's why I think this is so great. Oh, I could not agree more. One of the first things we did back in March, 2020, when I was actually living in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia at the start of March. And it was at the really? beginning of March when we realized like, oh, we're going to need to come home now just because there were uncertainties and borders were being shut down all sorts of things were in play as we all know well and we returned home on March 17th and I thought the old just way of planning time. just in time the old way of planning isn't going to work anymore so but we're entrepreneurs we're leaders we are on the forefront of change, right? We know how to change, but how do we change and adapt in this very rapid, completely unknown environment, right? Many of us have not dealt with something on this scale and scope before. So we stepped back and we thought we've got all the tools in place, but we need to adjust them a little bit. So we did exactly what you're talking about. We went from our traditional 90 day planning process to a six week cycle. Yeah. And even well beyond this, there are some instances when we've said to our clients, you're not ready for a 90 day plan. You're not ready for a six week plan. Start with two weeks. Start with what you know. If you have a goal and you have a destination in mind, and that's as far out as you can see right now, that's perfect. Go. Yeah. And then we revisit then, right? But when you get elevation and when you lay all the pieces out, right? Between what your resources and my resources, like you're going to have those checkpoints built in place. Like, okay, now this is when I revisit versus, okay, I did those two weeks. Now what? Uh, yeah. Now I'm done. Now what? <laughs> do I, yeah. Where do I go? Exactly. Like we keep going. There's an incredible African uh, proverb that our guide in Masai Mara, Kenya told us when we were on safari. And he said, we were lost in the middle of the, the <laughs> savannah and we were fine. We knew everything was good. I live by this mantra that everything is right on time. And he is Simon saying, we're late, we're late, we're late. And my husband and I are looking at each other. We are so right on time. Like we are in, like, this is heaven. We are, this is amazing. We could not be more right on time. And a good thing after good thing keeps unfolding while well, we're late and we're lost and Simon keeps apologizing and we're so good. I, I can't even express. And he said, there's this saying in Africa, you know where you are and you know where you're going. Everything in between. Eh. And he kind of threw his shoulders up and he shrugged. And there's a, I could, if there is no better year than this year and last year to say that everything between men, we don't know. We have no clue. And like, and I look, I said, looking out into the Savannah and he's like, we're supposed to be going somewhere by those trees. I look at the horizon and I see two trees. I'm like, I don't know which one the camps behind one of them. He said, like, ah, we're going to figure it out. And we do, but it doesn't come without like Simon had a plan. Simon knew somewhere over there, even though it was a little bit foggy, even though we were getting lost and we were getting stopped by literally the cheetah, literally the lions, the elephants. Like we saw four of the big five in our first couple of hours. Oh my gosh. And Simon's apologizing. We're like, well, we are good, Simon. Good. But you don't necessarily see what is in the horizon so clearly. But what you do see, plan for, step into, take action on. And this is where we vacillate between day-to-day, -day, weekly, get elevation on the vision. And when you come up, okay, the vision's a little bit more clear. Okay, the vision's a little bit more clear. Now the vision's a lot more clear. We just keep yeah. dialing it in, but you have to go into the day-to-day -day strategically and you have to elevate strategically. Yeah. And this is where I feel your workbook is so, and it's been so helpful for me because I know when, you know, when the pandemic hit last year and I had some big goals with my business and the, the program that was kind of earmarked as this is the core chunk of my revenue, I had to shut it down because I could no longer run it with virtual school and everything else. Cause my day looked very different. And I remember, you know, getting a little panicky about it and, um, 
my coach at the time, she had said, well, what's the, has your vision changed? And instantly I'm like, oh, let me pull out my workbook. <laughs> and I you know, grab my, grab my fresh start workbook. I look back at it and I read through everything I'd written down, you know, 90 days previously about that long-term vision, about that long-term goal and, and reconnected with, I was like, no, none of this has changed. I just need to kind of, and it's why I always use pencil. I think I just need to kind of erase that initial plan for what the next, you know, three, six months are going to look like and say, okay, now I need to be open to figuring out a new way to get there. But I love having that physical, and I am just such a physical when it comes to books. I know you've got the digital version for people who prefer digital, um, but I love to be able to just pull it up, open the paper, feel it and see in my own writing, this was a vision I set out for myself and to be able to reconnect with that every month, every quarter or every two weeks, whatever that looks like for you. It, it's, yeah, it's what every entrepreneur I've talked with whose business thrived or at least survived over the last 12 months, every single one of them talks about, well, my, my visions didn't change. My goals didn't change. I just had to release my marriage to the plan, the original plan that I put in place and be open to, you know, trying new things. I love that. It was something else that you said about coming back to those goals regularly, writing things down, um, struck me. I have my goal card in front of me. Um, something that we talk about in the Fresh Start Workbook yep. and we talk about in many, many places is writing your goals down, not just once, not once and tucking it away in a drawer and a digital file, definitely not in a digital file where you can't no. see it. We have to see our goals because our subconscious will rally to help us. There's so much of our programming that is done on autopilot, right? We've got a lot of lessons that we've picked up over our lifetimes that are so ingrained, we go on autopilot. And this is why through our planning processes, right? We've got to reprogram a little bit to align with our new vision where we're headed, where we are going, new or new not changed because, right? But from where we are now to where we're going, we've got to reprogram and do some things differently. And when we write down our goals and we keep them in front of us, I am holding my goal card up now for, for the listener. Um, and we write them down and we document, where are you going? What is your end destination? And you want to write this down. I write it down every month. There's a space to like mini goal card, redocument the goal card in the Fresh Start Workbook. I have this front and center. I'm looking at it every day in front of me. I actually have all of my goal cards since 2008. How when I did my that? It's crazy. I almost thought in the move back, where are the goal cards? Oh no, <laughs> that was like Can my I stick mine <laughs> on my uh. I, I put mine on a post-it right on my monitor. So I'm like, here's my focus for the month. This is where I'm at every day. I see it all day. Every day. Because again, we are human. Let your subconscious use these hacks, use these tools, use these resources to let your subconscious get reprogrammed and rally to support you. And it's, it's magic. Like I look back at the goal cards. I'm like, I did that. We did that too. There was one year in all of the goal cards that I didn't reach my goals. And that was because I listened to what someone else was recommending for me. I wasn't totally tapped into my intuition. I wasn't completely aligned and in harmony with my intentions and my vision. And I had to slide into, I'm not quite hustle mode because I don't really let myself go full on there. But again, that meant I was out of alignment. So I, one year, one year, otherwise stay in alignment, document your goals, redocument your goals over and over again. And you're just rallying the universe. Everything around you conspires to make it happen. Do you oh. find that as well? Oh, absolutely. And I can remember, you know, my background, I was, I'm a math major. So this whole writing and journaling and connecting, I'm like, that was so not who I was naturally inclined to be. And when I hired my first just coach, coach, more life kind of coach, not specific business skills several years ago, she was the one, you know, let's write this down. I'm like, that's just, to me, I was instantly, that's a waste of time. 
I'm not in, I'm not quote being productive when I'm sitting here connecting with visions and goal planning and all of that. Well, thankfully she did not give up on me <laughs> and she kept finding creative ways to bring me in and draw me in. And so when I finally started doing that, yeah. I mean, I, I vividly remember the first thing when she was talking about manifestation and all of that. And I finally wrote down this thing that was really important to me and I had no clue how it was going to happen. I'm like, I'm, I'm just putting it out in the world. I wrote it. I said it every day. I put it on a sticky note on my mirror and in 10 days it happened. I mean, and it was creepy how it happened. I remember getting on the phone with her and she's like, you have crazy manifestation powers. Like you've got to really nurture this. And so I laugh because the old Megan of just only a few years ago that like I rolled my eyes of, you know, crystals and all. I was like, oh, whatever. Now I'm like, I'm all in. I do all of it. I've got um, these amazing limitless possibilities cards. So every day I flip one over and it's my theme for the day. So today I have, it is my duty to be healthy, wealthy, successful, and abundant. And I just read that all day long. Ooh, and then you find it like, cause you're thinking it, you're aware of it. You're recognizing it. You're bringing it into your life. And so, yeah, I just, I, I laugh cause I wish that I could take the new, the, the me that is today to the me of five, six years ago <laughs> and like show people both side by side. Cause it, it's life-changing when you do that. It really is changing. I could not agree more. That statement that you made, could you reread that? Card? Yeah. Isn't this a good one? To, I never know what I'm going to get. I just flip over the top one. It is my duty to be healthy, wealthy, successful, and abundant. Mm. And yeah. how many women out there get uncomfortable when they hear wealthy, successful, right? And even comfortable with it. Duty to it. It's my Ooh. duty. Ooh, cause duty. I'm like, I got a lot of other duties to do. And then my head goes to, I got some chores. I got to gotta change the laundry. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, yeah. I love that flip. That yeah. got me. Yeah, that was, and every day I would flip, flip over whichever one it is. And what's crazy is I feel like every day, I'm like, oh my God, that's the message I needed to hear today. Oh but it gosh. ties in with all of, all of this stuff. So it, super it, powerful. Is this the manifesting, the alignment, the stepping into our goals. It's so funny as I, I, I read about manifesting, I learned about the law of attraction. Uh, I have a corporate background, right? I've got, we've got a variety of backgrounds, right? And I'm like, oh, these things actually all weave together incredibly. Yeah. Like when we do our strategic planning, I'm actually, man, this is my manifesting process, right? Okay. When I set my goals, my subconscious is pulling through and I'm more alert. My brain is watching for these things that are going to help me reach my goals. Um, even in this conversation, right? I had a couple of ahas. I'm like, wait a second. I just had a shift in perspective in thinking in trajectory. And had I not been in that strategic frame of mind, had I not had my goals front and center, those things might've just passed me by. Yeah. And that's where, you know, I, I'm passionate about all the things that you teach and do, but it's not my zone of genius. Like my, I get super excited about saying, Hey, show me your task list. Show me your life. Show me everything you've got going on. Let me help you get out of the weeds, but I know the importance of the other. And so for people who are you know, more wired, like I am of just a little bit more that OCD I've got to do when you take the time and prior, well, when you prioritize and make the time to spend even just 10 minutes a month working in the fresh start workbook, it, it is a game changer for then how you step into your month. And I noticed just this last month, cause we're what today's the fifth, um, so the first was on a Monday. We'd just come home from a four day trip to get the puppy. I'm sleep deprived. I'm anxious. I'm, you know, taking a unpotty trained dog, just all the things. I'm not in a good headspace. And it's Monday morning. I'm trying to do monthly planning, weekly planning. And I brought all that energy into it. So I'm going straight into panic mode. I'm not gonna be able to get anything done. This dog, you know, all the stuff. And then I pulled up my monthly checklist and the first thing on it always, you know, monthly success tracker, check in with fresh start workbook. And instantly I'm like, I don't have time for that. 
And the minute I say that, I know that means I need to do it. So I pulled out my workbook, checked in with what, you know, March, all of that. I was in there for all of seven minutes tops. <laughs> and Jeez. all of a sudden, totally different energy brought to my monthly planning. Instead of here are all the things I'm not going to be able to do here, are all the restrictions. It was okay. What can I do? I need to get some new routines in place. How am I going to accommodate this? How am I going to change up the mornings? How am I going to change up that? And if you don't take that time and you're someone like I am who can easily get overwhelmed, it's just, you're, you're, you're buried in it. You're buried in it all the time. Ooh. So I'm just so thankful for this workbook. Truly. It, it brings me up out of tactical mode, which is where my comfort zone is into, and I like strategic, but I like strategic tactical. Mm -hmm. This connects me back to my purpose, my passion, my vision, my dreams that grounds everything. So I think you've done, you have done something that I think the, the world needs of taking that, uh, for lack of a better word, but really just pragmatic, real, tangible connection back to that dreamer visioner side, which is so hard to do. And yet you pulled it off. So I think it's amazing. Man, that hearing you speak every word means so much. And it's funny because as you spoke, I feel like there's a level of me, you know, as we grow, as we learn, as we reflect, as we do this planning and the elevation, we get more and more aware of who yep. we as individuals are. And I started as the uh, someone in corporate, what was, uh, I was like, I'm like, we're going to get it done. I was the get it done girl. I'm like, we got things to do. I'm going to make sure it gets done. Uh, task list, project management, uh, running the meetings, operations, pulling the people together. Uh, I was the, I was the partner to our leaders and I'm every list, everything. And it's funny because I resisted everything that we do yes. and talk about in the fresh start workbook i would okay. take it in when we were in those meetings i'm like this is really great what do i need to but do? <laughs> <laughs> okay do we have our action plan who's yeah. doing that and i sit in meetings now and i'm like i was I, I know i was so annoying i was so annoying we need we need this mindset i need this person right i need this and now that i've I, I've stepped, I think I've learned that I need both yeah. <laughs> and I stepped into this space of, okay, harmony. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I am fully embracing harmony, balance, goodbye. It, didn't even, it wasn't even coming out there. It didn't even fit. Now that we have embraced harmony, my productivity Amen. has soared. My results have, I, we my results. I'm not going to, I don't even want to jinx it. I got some good goals on this goal card. I've got some good goals on this goal card. We'll see what happens. I mean, we expanded last year from 10 cities to 17 cities with a four month shutdown. Like, so things are still happening and things are still moving. And that happens not because I stay fully in execution mode because, but we need all these things. Yep. Not because I stay fully in strategic mode, but the harmony of the blending. Oh. Yeah. 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 And I think you're, you hit on something key. It's not any one <laughs> strategy. We need to focus on, I believe one thing at a time, right? So we're not stretched too thin our brains, but we, there are multiple strategies. There are multiple approaches that we will weave together to bring goals to life. Like when you were mentioning multiple planners, there's a content planner <laughs> I have my eye on. It's was sold out the last time I looked. I've got to go double check. But I'm like, I need a space to also now think through my marketing strategy exclusively. And I also like for things to be on paper when we're not moving. When we're in the middle of a move, I'm going to be stationary for another 18 months at least. But, <laughs> <laughs> but right, what are, so as you look at your strategy and your vision and you look at your priorities, right, who do you need on your team, right? Mm -hmm. We need both ways of thinking. What resources do you need on your team? What strategies? It may not be one track, right? No. So, yeah. 
Yeah, open up to, and this is not right on time that I've learned, I just wide open my arms. If I'm not being open right now, and if I find myself, what am I, am I closing something off? Am I not being open to something? I don't know. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. I might not even know what it is. I just open my arms and I will just be for a minute. And I will just let whatever needs to come in, come in. So for anyone who may be hearing this thinking, I don't, I don't know what it is, or you're right, my vision isn't clear right now. I'm doing the tasks. Keep stepping into that, but just take some time to just be, be. from time. You will time. love my, my dear friend, Roxanne. She's one of my biz besties. She's always telling her clients and I love it. She says, you're not ahead. You're not behind. You're exactly where you need to be. And I, I hear her on my little, she sits on my shoulder and just says that in my ears often. And it's so, every time I hear that, or even just say it, I just go, <sighs> right. We're right where we need to be period. And be open to that. So good. Okay. Oh, so, okay. So everybody now hopefully realizes you need the fresh start workbook. <gasps> where can they find it? Oh my goodness. You can grab the fresh start workbook at freshstartworkbook.com. <laughs> it's so easy. And I'll, I'll put it in the show notes too. Um, but I truly would encourage anyone. And even if you're not a business owner, ladies, everybody should have dreams and goals and visions for your life, whether they're related to running a business or not. So don't feel like this only applies to an entrepreneur. Um, Good. Everybody needs this. You know, my girls, when we, when I was doing my year end reflections, I mentioned I do them at the end of the year and in the middle of the year. Um, I was doing them with my girls and I invited my 10 year old and my seven year old to answer the questions. There's a, there's a letter to yourself at the end of the annual planning in the Fresh Start Workbook. And I asked the girls to fill it in with me on New Year's Eve this year. And they said, what is this? This, you did this? Listen, I want one. So this, it, a life, all ages, right? And there's a definitely uh, goal setting. I mean, we've got to do it in both areas of our life and don't neglect that area because a better business means a better life. There's purpose behind all of it. Oh, God, so much goodness. I, I can't wait to go back and listen to everything you said today too. Where can everybody best follow you and get all things Amber? Because if you don't have Amber in your life, you need it. <laughs> Oh, come hang out. I would love that. Say hello. I'm Amber McHugh on Instagram and AmberMcHugh.com, Amber McHugh on Facebook. Okay. We'll put everywhere out there, but it, you truly are very easy to find, which I so appreciate. So <laughs> easy peasy. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have any final words that you would love to share with our listeners? Oh my gosh. I want to say thank you, Megan, for introducing me to your community and I, everyone I'll in alignment with what Roxanne says. You are right on time. It is impossible to be late for your destiny. Oh, so good. So good. Thank you so much, Amber. Mwah. <laughs>